Mr. Speaker. The House take note of miscellaneous business. Mr. Speaker. I call the right honourable so Winston move. Peters. I so move. Mr. Speaker, in recent weeks, there have been a cacophony of calls, a literal caterwauling of echoes regarding a campaign being launched against the senior citizens of this country. They are being targeted because politicians, pressure groups and the media have decided they are getting too much money and they are getting it too early. Now, I want to remind members of what these people are being paid at 65 years. It's $348 a week single living alone. It's $536 a week for a married couple. Anyone in the house living on that? No. Any of these people over there living on that? No. When there are problems, society always looks for scapegoats. Let's find someone to blame. Let's, for example, pick on the elderly. Now, in Nazi Germany, they had to find scapegoats. They didn't blame their own militant leadership between 1914 and 1918. They just blamed the Jews. Now, we cannot blame the elderly for problems facing New Zealand, and I'm going to tell members why. <coughs> These problems were caused by politicians and greedy banks and corrupt leadership of finance companies in the last few years. But since 84, this is what's happened to New Zealand. Since 1984, two governments are coming to power, one in New Zealand, one in Australia. Australia has, by making incremental change and reform, grown 37% larger in terms of GDP, in real terms, than New Zealand, who went down the road of economic experimentation. And the blame lies fairly in the experience of this House. Not with the elderly, but with those people who thought, and still think, that this experiment is going to work, and it's not going to work. What's, average, what's the growth rate of Australia that Mr Key has been talking about all this time, saying that we are performing Australia? Well, it came in for the end of March at well over 4%. What's ours? 1.1. This genius from Merrill Lynch has been telling this House this for, for months after months, and it's all absurdly false. What's the average of the growth rate under his administration? Well, it's a lousy 0.8 per year, and that's why they're looking around here in this House now and outside for scapegoats, and they've found the elderly. And who is leading this charge? Well, it's the Council for Financial Services. Who are they? Well, their chairperson is Jenny Shipley. The person who couldn't understand the BNZ disaster, the wine box, the Asian financial crisis, is now heading the financial services sector of this country, and she was the very person back in 97 when we offered a referendum in this country for people to save from tax cuts, 8% eventually, to go straight into their personal account, and we would have tens and tens of billions now have we done that. What did Jenny Shipley do? Well, she went out and opposed it, but now she's leading the financial services and she's saying we're going to have to have a savings plan. What damn hypocrisy. What a sham that she of all people should be doing this, out there saying, well, we've got to do something about our savings because we can't afford super 80 years from now. And I think there's only 10,000 New Zealanders right now who are at 20 years of age who have got any chance of living to 180 years' time. And she's very concerned about that because she says half of them born now, if they're born now, will be 100 years old 100 years from now. Oh, <laughs> no analysis, no facts, just PR spin out there. And the report hasn't been released to anybody yet. No, no, see, they're saving the report for some future time. In the meantime, they are just scaremongering. We know how this problem started. Yet certain sections of the public and the media believe the elderly should pay. We're referring to someone's grandparents. It is an outrageous situation. And New Zealand First will start a revolution before we will let the pension get cut again. We don't intend to go on running. We don't intend to run a miserable failed economy. Oh no, we're the ones who believe in the currency being controlled for farmers and exporters. They don't. They believe in downtown Queen Street, downtown Queen Street paper shufflers, speculators and foreigners, all sorts of people. Yeah, Wall Street. No, no, not, no, nobody in New Zealand is of any interest to them. They look after all the other people who pump money to their financial coffers. And Bill English, we know when he was last 
the Minister of Finance, what did he do? He cut the pensions from six, 65 to a lousy 60. The Prime Minister is starting to sound I call hollow the in his statements, a, Mr Speaker. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, our list for today had the National Party as the first on it and the Labour Party as the second. Uh, um, well, I, all I can say is that I have New Zealand first, uh, first then I have National and then Labour. I okay. Mr Speaker. I